Alright, I got the other end brace screwed in right now. I didn't glue this one. Uh, honestly, most of my glue joints have ended up cracking because I had to move the, the uprights around to get everything nice and square. Uh, I also had a lot of trouble with the miter on this end and none of the other joints are miter cut so I I just switched it over to a square cut and I took the mitered end of that board and I put it by the door because this part is going to be wider than this part. If you look straight down the van there that white piece that bumps out is from there all the way across when the flaps are folded out is going to be 32 inches wide. So everything inboard of that up here and back by the speakers will be a little bit wider than 32 inches. I want it to be 32 inches wide because the bed I'm getting is 30 inches wide so that leaves a little room for it to move around and not fall off. I've got the front cross brace screwed on there with only one screw right now because I might have to take that back off and I'm preparing to put the the last remaining cross brace in here to make this a box. I took it out of the van so it would be easier to screw that together instead of fighting with the drill up by the wall of the van. Alright, I got that back board installed and the next thing I need to do is get the cabinet securely mounted to the van so that I can know exactly where it's going to be and then I can trace that back wall and cut the uh, top decking uh, so that it conforms to that. Doesn't seem to want to go through that flat part. I'm going to have to let this cool down and reset it. It didn't get as clean of a cut when I flipped it over, but I can tune that up on my bench grinder. Alright, I'm going to be using that original bolt hole to the van. That's one of the bolts that held the stow and go seat in on the top side there. And you can see there's a little bit of a hole or a cavity or whatever you want to call it right there. And this is all visible when the van is uh, in sleeping mode or in seat up mode. Right now I got the seat down. Uh, I cut that bracket wide enough to cover up that hole so stuff doesn't fall down in there and it'll look a little bit nicer. My pencil lined up right down into that hole so I put that piece of tape on the board marked where the hole was and then I lined up my pencil and marked it and then made a little circle so that I would know where to drill that hole. Alright I got my bracket hole drilled and then I drilled two holes in the back side of it so that I can secure it to the wood with uh, these wood screws. They're one and a quarter so they should be short enough and I countersunk the holes so that when it's sitting in there it's nice and flush. I don't know if you can see that pencil line or not, but I'm going to have to trim this bracket uh, to get it to be flush with the wood. Uh, that's the difference between level to the world and level with the floor of the trailer. It's or with the floor of the van. It's uh, quite a bit different. So that's quite a bit to try to grind off with my bench grinder. I'm probably going to bring that down to my folks' house and uh, use my stepdad's. Uh, plasma cutter to cut that off. It'll be uh, a lot easier on my equipment anyways. I'm gonna have to sand this and paint it eventually anyways. I'll probably cut that when I take this cabinet back out to paint it. I countersunk the wrong side of the bracket the first time so I brought it back in the garage and flipped it over and did the side that the screws are actually going to go into. There I have the bracket bolted down tight to the frame and you can see I got two wood screws that hold the bracket to the bench of the cabinet. Now if I just find a 
little piece of carpeting to put in there. You'll never even see that and it'll blend right in. Uh, I think I might uh, cannibalize the, the flap from the seat that I took out to put in that spot. Uh, that way I can cover that up all the way across there. It's kind of ugly and I'll have to cut it one side of the bracket and the other side of the bracket but I can hold it in place with velcro and I think that'll it's not going to have any stress it's purely cosmetic stuff all right I used my level clamped onto the piece of plywood as a guide fence to cut it with my uh, skill saw you can see by that shrapnel there that it broke right at the very end uh, luckily it didn't break the good side and I'm still going to be able to use it uh, so now I have the 55 inch long piece in the van okay I have the plywood top clamped to the cabinet now obviously it's way too wide so I need to contour it to the back of the uh, wall of the van and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the wall of the van with this wrench that I stuck a pencil into it and then that will give me an outline of how I need to cut that with my jigsaw. You can see the line that I scribed dips out around that bump out. And this part over here, I think I'm probably not going to cut that off right away because uh, I want to fit that a little bit tighter to the door. But I couldn't touch the door when I was doing it, so I'm probably going to come in through here and just go like this and then I'll fit this last after I see how all the rest of this stuff works. try this again. I got accomplished what I wanted to get done today. I got the top on this thing. Uh, I still got a little fine tuning to do. It's sticking out about a quarter inch but I generally have about a quarter inch of gap on the back so I'm gonna keep sanding that and fitting that until it uh, is nice and tight and this edge is flush. Um, I did have Bradley climb up there and lay on it and he's got pretty decent headroom to this to the roof um. the air mattress I'm looking at at Alps Mountaineering uh, they make a three inch and a four inch thick mattress and being that it's going to be on a perfectly flat surface and to give him an extra inch of headroom uh, I, th I think I'm going to order the three inch mattress for up here I'm still going to get the 4 inch for the floor because that floor is a lot more bumpy and it's not as even so I want the thicker mattress down there. But it'll still be 30 inches wide and 77 inches long and this platform at this narrowest point is going to be uh, 9 inches wider when it's in bed mode and that'll make it 32 inches wide and then but that's at that narrowest point. Up by your shoulders and down by your feet it'll be a little wider yet. Um, I wanted to 
just kind of keep track of how much money I've spent on this project so far. Uh, the van cost me 500 bucks. Uh, it was a delivery van where I work at an auto parts store, and it is a 2006, but it's got 220,000 miles on it. Uh, it was probably worth more than 500 bucks, but my boss hooked me up. I told him I wanted to make a camper van, and, and he gave me a really good deal on it, so I thank him for that. Um, the first trip to Menards that I did uh, with the plywood and the 4x4s, I bought four sticks of that, eight feet long, and then I bought the plywood. And I also bought some, bought some hinges that I haven't used yet, but they're for the part that flips up here. Um, that trip was like 65 or 70 bucks. I don't remember exactly. And then when I went to Walmart, I bought the water container and the expandable bucket. That was $16. They were like $8 each. So that's you know, 70, 85. Uh, I did have a couple of 2x4s uh, at the house here that I used, so they were probably 10 bucks. And I did buy a box of screws at the local hardware store. So I'm about $100 into the conversion and $600 total into the van. And the bugs are coming out. I'm going to put the tools away and make some supper because it's uh, getting kind of late. <laughs>